Hey guys, Quip the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at how to process data when you're using a color camera with two filters. One would be capturing H-alpha and oxygen-3, the other capturing sulfur-2 and oxygen-3. And I actually featured a couple of filters that can let you do just that for just $200 in a recent video. They are the Ascar C1 and C2 filters. Uh, I'll put the links down below if you're interested, also probably up above. And I've also made another video recently detailing like all of the ins and outs of using multi-band filters with color cameras, which is exactly what I've done on the M42 uh, Orion Nebula, and we're going to process it today together so that you can be aware of the workflow that I pretty much always use to get my Hubble telescope palette. And that's where we really mix art and science, and it is a lot of fun. And uh, by the way, I will also be checking out uh, the Ascar D1 and D2 filters, which are similar to C1 and C2, but they're just like sharper or like narrower and more expensive uh, because one of my subscribers and Patreon supporters sent them to me. I've already checked them via spectrophotometer and they're really good. But uh, make sure you subscribe and like the video and click the bell icon if you want to uh, make sure to watch this video. But for now, we'll do with data that I had from the C1 and C2 filters and we're going to be processing this in pix and size. Now before that, just a quick reminder of how things work. We're using a color camera, uh, which can capture the red, green, and blue pixels eff effectively, and we're pairing it with two filters, one after the other. Uh, one filter will capture uh, wavelengths for oxygen-3 and H-alpha, which are two main wavelengths of light emitted by emission nebula, like the Orion Nebula. And then another filter will capture also oxygen-3, because oxygen-3 is weaker, so it doesn't hurt if we capture it twice. But it will also capture sulfur-2, which is another emission band for emission nebula. And so we end up, once we have taken those two images of the same target in a row with two different filters, we end up with oxygen-3, H-alpha, and sulfur-2. So we have three wavelengths, that we can map to red, green, and blue, or to whatever we like, and then massage the data. And that's where we mix art and science, because what we're doing is extremely scientific. We are isolating wavelengths that are being emitted by emission nebula, and they are being emitted by that because these emission nebula have had their gases ionized, and as they go back to a more stable, uh, energy level, they will emit photons in very specific colors, and that is what we capture. That's super cool. And then the art part is okay, we now have those very scientific like pieces of data of like, okay, we have oxygen 3, sulfur 2, H alpha. Let's map those randomly to some colors like red, green, and blue, mix them together, and see what happens because we're trying from those very scientific uh, wavelengths that we have captured, we're trying to put forward something that makes sense to the human eye. The human eye would be unable to differentiate sulfur-2 and H-alpha, for instance, because they're both in the deep red. So we intentionally kind of mess with things just so that we can see those scientifically captured colors in a way that makes sense to us, to our eyes, and to our perception, which I find to be a lot of fun. So anyway, I am currently in PixInsight, and you can see I have two images open. The one on the left is the image where I have oxygen-3 and H-alpha, and the one on the right is the image where I have sulfur-2 and oxygen-3. I've also just added a bunch of process icons. These are icons that will let me uh, do the processing faster. And just to let you know, I am using a variety of scripts in there. I'll put all of the links down below so you can download my process icons, but also the scripts. The scripts at the top, Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, and Noise Exterminator, uh, they are paying scripts. They are add-ons, picks and sites. They're worth their price in gold and more. Uh, but you, most of they're really not necessary. Uh, Blur Exterminator, we can do without, and you would still get the awesome colors that we're going to get. Noite ex Exterminator, same thing. And Star Exterminator, it's a convenience, but you can use uh, the StarNet process to achieve something very similar. So technically it is not needed, but because they are, they are so efficient and so good, I will still be using them. 
Anyway, we have like our two Orion nebulae here and with different colors. And let's remember that, okay, the one on the left is H alpha oxygen three, the one on the right is sulfur two oxygen three, H alpha is in the deep red, uh, sulfur two is in deep red, and oxygen three is in the blue green. And so we can separate the channels, red, green, and blue, to then be able to separate oxygen three from the image on the left, oxygen three from the image on the right, and then H alpha from the image on the left, and sulfur two from the image on the right. So we can separate all of those bands and then combine them as we see fit. Before we do that, I'm going to do a background extraction on those images. And this is because right now you're looking at them when I have uh, stretched them or rendered them visible to our eyes, but I stretch them with what we call an unlinked stretch, meaning, meaning the red, green, and blue channels are stretched separately. Uh, but if I were to stretch them like normally, this is how those two images look like. Obviously, there's a lot of green, and that green is from uh, the light pollution in Tokyo, which is where I've taken this picture, and also from the fact that your camera sensor has twice as many green pixels as it does red or blue pixels. So I'm going to do several steps. I am first going to go to Script and Toolbox and then Graxpert. And this will let me run uh, Graxpert. I'll put the link down below as well to this Graxpert uh, script so you are aware of it. And uh, I still like to put my smoothing to uh, yes, one. Uh, the default is zero or whatever you said last. Um, but I, I, I still like to have it to one, but that's just me. Uh, this is something that I've gone into the details in, in previous videos, but you can test with different values to see how it works for you. Okay, here we have the Graxpert result where we've extracted the background and you can see the background is visible here. Uh, I'm going to close it because I can see the background is fine. We didn't lose any uh, nebulosity features and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with that second image here. So script, toolbox, Graxpert and run it. And here is the result again, really cool, uh, nice result. And we have the background that is visible here. Again, I'm just going to close out the background because it looks fine, we haven't lost any nebulosity. So now that we have those two images, just so I don't get confused, I will close the original images. And I'll call that this one like O3HA. and this one, O3 S2. Okay, now my next step is going to be simply, I want to do some blur exterminator and noise exterminator on those images. They're basically letting me eke out more details and then uh, get better signal to noise ratio in my images. Uh, but again, those are like not mandatory. Um, and so I will just drag and drop BXT onto my image. And we're going to do it once for each image. So this is on oxygen 3H alpha. And now I can do it with oxygen 3 sulfur 2. And here we are. So now we have slightly more details in the uh, in the image just to show you a bit like of uh, uh, before and after. You can see that the results are much sharper on the post BXT image, which is really nice. And then I'm gonna go with some noise exterminator as well. And here we are for the H alpha oxygen three, doing it for the sulfur two oxygen three. And here we go, we are now ready for basically splitting the channels to go to our individual sulfur two, H alpha and oxygen three channels. So let's do that. First, I'm gonna take the oxygen three H alpha and I am going to use this button here to split the RGB channels of the image. You can see we have red, green, and blue. So the red one is pretty much equal to H alpha. So I'm just going to call it H alpha and uh, have a quick look at it. Yes, this looks like H alpha and just forget about it for now. Here's my H alpha. Then green and blue, they're both uh, indicators of oxygen three effectively. You have the blue one, you have the green one. Both of those are indicative of oxygen three. They're the, what we captured of oxygen three, but also because of this particular uh, image using H alpha and the way that your color camera sensor works, we are also captured a bit of H alpha within those blue and green, green channels. This is just something to be uh, aware of. 
so you'll see that there's going to be a big difference between the oxygen 3 of the uh, filter on the left here and the oxygen 3 from the filter on the right, even though in theory they should be the same, but they're not because of how our camera sensors work. So I have blue and green, so I'm going to rename them to like G and B, just so that we have them uh, here. And I've prepared some pixel math here that is basically going to take both the blue and the green channels and merge them together with some weights added. And in general, because green has so much more pixels in your camera sensor compared to blue, I prefer to put a higher weight on green than I do uh, blue. So maybe this time we can go to like a blue times 0 0.3 and green point zero point times 0 0.7. So I'm taking like the, the green channel, taking it 70% of its intensity and then adding it to 30% of the intensity of the blue channel. And this should give us basically the oxygen 3 channel. I'm going to create a new image and the color space will be grayscale, which is fine. And here we are. So this is basically my Oxygen 3 1. I'm just going to call it O031 because this is the one from the H alpha Oxygen 3 uh, image. And let's look at how it looks like. It looks like this. Let's put it into an icon for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and close both the blue and the green channels because I don't really need them anymore. And now we are going to do exactly the same with the Oxygen 3 Sulfur 2 image. So decompose into red, green, and blue channels. Red is basically only Sulfur 2, so I'm just going to call it S2. And here is how it looks like. And I'm gonna ic iconize that because I don't need this for the moment. Then we have again green and blue channels, so I'm gonna put green here and blue there. And we'll want to combine them exactly as we did earlier, right? We have the blue channel, we have the green channel. Let's combine them and I'll use those weights for now. And click here and now we have a new image which is the combination of green and blue. And that's how it looks like. And this is going to be our Oxygen 3 2. This is the one from the Sulfur 2 Oxygen 3 filter. So here we are, we have uh, basically split our channels just going to close those uh, two windows. And those initial images that we have like Oxygen 3 Sulfur 2 and Oxygen 3 H alpha, I probably won't be using them uh, anymore. So I just like iconize them and forget about them for now. Let's go to Oxygen 3 1 and Oxygen 3 2. Here we go. So these two, they represent in theory the same data, even though they don't look exactly the same. And on the Orion Nebula, because the, the signals on Orion are so strong, they actually look fairly similar. Uh, but on some other nebula, you will see very, very different results uh, between the, the two. But here we're just going to combine them. So for that, I use another script that I have iconized here, which is combined oxygen three. And this is again, pixel math. And I'm saying like, okay, take half of the intensity of oxygen three one and half of the intensity of oxygen three two and add them together very simple and that once I execute it, which I just did now, will merge those two images. So I can close down Oxygen 1 and uh, Oxygen 3 2 because I now have merged them together into what is going to be my master Oxygen 3. Here we go. So that's my master Oxygen 3 image. Here we go. And now we have H alpha, Oxygen 3 and Sulfur 2. Those are the three wavelengths that we wanted to capture from our uh, emission nebula and we have managed to capture them successfully. And here we are with the results of those three channels. So now we want to, I'm going to stretch them. And for that I'm going to use a stretching script called the, the Bill's Stretch uh, Unlinked. And this will basically just like go from, uh, if I remove the auto stretch like this very dark kind of image to an image that is more visible to the uh, human eye. And it's going to be that this, this script is built in a way that as I apply it to each of the three images, it will uh, stretch them to the same level roughly. So we'll have uh, an intensity of each, ima each image very similar. So we're gonna stretch oxygen three, H alpha and sulfur two, the three images 
are stretched now. And now that they're stretched, I can go with my next step, which is the LRGB combination. So I'm going to open that and say my luminous channel is actually going to be H alpha. Uh, it's basically, I, I want my detail layer to be from the H alpha channel because it has the best signal to noise ratio. Then my red channel is going to be sulfur two. My green channel is going to be H alpha. And my blue channel is going to be oxygen three each of the master channels that we have. And this is where we start doing art, effectively. We're using the scientific data we've gathered and presenting it in a way that makes sense to us humans with our human eyes. So I am applying the LRGB combination. It's going to create a new image. And you can see that the image looks not so good. And this is because I forgot a very essential step here. So I'm just going to quickly close this image, go back to oxygen three uh, H alpha. And what I'm going to do is I am going to stretch this oxygen three H alpha. And now it is stretched. And once it is stretched, I am going to go and extract the stars using the star exterminator uh, tool. And now I have the stars in a separate image. We also have some weird thing here. Let's see if we can get rid of it by um, amending the star exterminator. I can go and check large overlap and see if that changes anything. If not, that's going to be fine, probably. It help might be a little bit, I'm not sure. Uh, but now we have the stars, so I'm just going to call them stars. And because there's a lot of green in the stars, I'm going to run um, SCNR on that image to remove the green from the stars. And I'll just be like putting the stars aside. I will just put them back into the main image later on. So I have my stars here. I'm going to go back to my initial like Orion image before the stretch and yeah, iconize it. And now I'm going to remove the stars from each of my images. So star exterminator on each of them. Okay, we are done. And now I can do my LRGB combination without having to worry about the magenta stars that we were getting as a result, because we're not getting any stars. We are getting a bit of magenta here and we're, going so, we're getting some weird colors. It's a bit of a cocktail. And now we're gonna enhance that using the narrowband normalization tool here. And this is a script again from Bill Blanchon Again, all of the links are in the description. And I'm going to select the, pa the palette as SH2, SHO, because we used sulfur as red, hydrogen as green, and oxygen as blue. And we can try or get a real-time preview of how things are going to look like and see what happens if I have like an S2 boost. And what happens if I like diminish the oxygen three or add some oxygen three we can play with the colors. And this is like boosting each of the individual wavelengths with just like, you know, the, what do you want to get as a final uh, result? How do you want it to present to your end users, to people who will be looking at the final image? And you know, I don't want to enhance the, um, the magenta that we have here too much. So I'm gonna try to get rid of bits of that magenta. So I'm going to go into all processes and invert the image. Here it is. And now I'm going to run SCNR on it. Uh, maybe not super strong, maybe like 60% or so. And that will remove a lot of the magenta once I invert the image back to what it was originally. And now I'm gonna play with the uh, narrowband normalization. Again, I'm going to open a preview so we can see how it looks like. And now the, the magenta that we had here very strong is a bit less strong thanks to this operation we just did. But this is like really up to taste, right? How much do you want to boost the oxygen three? What, what colors do you want to, uh, to achieve? And you know, if I boost oxygen three, what gets uh, more colored? And you can see that there's a lot of oxygen three in those regions there, it gets more magenta. And you can play also with things like the shadow point a little bit, like so if I wanted to have like a slightly brighter image and to bring the background out some more, you can see I have like more background that's brought out by the script, which is kind of fun. And when I do that, I'm realizing like, oh, maybe there's a little bit too much magenta, so maybe I can diminish the oxygen three. 
and you know increase the sulfur too we we can have fun right this is where it's pure art art in the name of science so you just adjust it to taste i'm like okay what the heck why why not something like this you know and and see what happens so let's do that here's the result we have like those really fun colors um that but they're like based on science so it's fine <laughs> And then I can run some some stuff like I can do an uh, HDR multi-scale transformation. Although it tends to be, even if I have like a lightness mask and I apply it to lightness, uh, too strong in my case, even if I like increase the number of layers. So you can see it can try to have like the heart of the nebula, but it kind of like fails a little bit at the transition there. So what I do in that case uh, to, to basically have a better process there is I will make a copy of image 26 here. And so to make a copy, I just drag and drop here to an empty area. We now have a copy and I will apply the HDR multi-scale transform to the copy. Then I can run pixel mask to merge the two images just like we did earlier for Oxygen 3. So I'm going to have like image 26. Maybe I want to do like times 0 0.7 uh, because the image 26 clone has a bit too much of a, like uh, an abrupt change there. So let's try that. Image 26 underscore clone times 0 0.3. Here we go. We're going to make sure that it's going to be red RGB color as the output. And here's the output. Is it worth it? Uh, maybe, maybe not actually. Let's, let's try maybe more aggressively, like by merging half and half. So I'm changing the coefficient to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And it's creating a new image. And I think this is, yeah, this is kind of fine. I like this uh, this result, image 29. That's what we're going to go with. And then, you know, it's like you're back to normal processing. You've done your color combination. You can still do curves, right? This is going to be basically like 90% of what is left to do. You could also do some color masks and play with specific colors. Um, do, you know, whatever you, you want there. Play to your heart's content. And you see, as I play with the curve, I can go like super crazy with the colors. No, I don't like that. This is too much. But you know, that's that's where you know the the individual styles of each astrophotographer come into play. That's where, based on the same data, none of us basically end up with the same results. And now this is like honestly, it is far too strong for me. But I'm just having fun for the sake of a video, right? So that's fine. Let's say that now my processing is done, the colors are done, I'm happy with what I have, not really, but whatever. I can now recombine the stars in here. So I'm just going to re rename my image to starless. And I'm going to use one of my eye icons here, which is uh, recombine stars. And it's basically another pixel math formula that takes stars, which we have here, uh, which we extracted from the HA Oxygen 3 image earlier. And we made sure to stretch it before extracting those stars. And I'm going to combine them with starless and create a new image, uh, which is going to be a, a color image. And that should add back our stars to the image. And we have like this crazy color M42 there. Then we could do some further processing using one of the other of the, uh, the, the scripts that are available, which would be star reduction, where I can open up the script and basically tell the script that my target view here is image 30. The starless view is starless and we can apply that and it will basically reduce the uh, the star sizes in the final image and that's how it would look like although I kind of liked the full stars full size stars it really depends on your processing and what you want to achieve but let's say that for now this is our final result uh, yeah which is uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting final result but it has its roots in reality obviously if you were to just look at uh, the M42 Nebula and our eyes were sensitive enough to to see the full color of the nebula You'd see mostly red like the, the whole nebula would be red or pink and that's because H alpha which is in the deep red is so powerful 
But here we've taken each of the individual channels and we've basically strengthened them respectively to see what results we can arrive at. And I think it's such a fun thing to do and I, I don't feel like I'm be betraying anything. I think there's a lot of people that think the moment you start to mess with the colors, like you're, you're getting away from pure science and astrophotography has no meaning anymore and uh, etc. But I'm not of this opinion. I think it's just we're finding a way to present scientific results in a super cool, non-scientific and artsy way, but still linked to science. Art in the service of science. And to go back and stress how different the processing can be depending on the astrophotographer, I want to show you the processing I had for this same image with the same data previously. It was this. It is completely different, right? <laughs> it's from the same data. It's just a different day. And you can see that I, had, uh, I, ma I managed to handle the core better that last time than this time. But it is all in good fun. And that's, uh, yeah, that is basically my tutorial to combine those images. And so I want to thank my Patreon supporters and channel members because you guys truly make the channel possible. But viewers, subscribers, if you watch the videos, if you subscribe to the channel, if you like the videos, if you leave a comment, every little bit helps. And I hope that we can get this kind of tutorial out to more and more people because your views, your comments and your likes are the only way that basically YouTube promotes my videos to others. This video also was probably more than 20 minutes, so I'll make sure to have uh, my list of credits for my Patreon and channel members at the end of the video together with that final image. With that, I hope this was useful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, what you would have done differently. I can tell you what I would have done differently. is probably I would have run uh, HDR multi-scale transform before running the narrowband normalization script and that would have handled the core of the nebula better. Also, I would not have done, gone as crazy, as crazy with the colors, but hey, yeah, it's fun. So that's it. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.